We do. Um, in 2025, the Arso Partnership will be 20 years old, um, which is relatively new considering the history of the university. But it really is an exciting story about how the university can serve communities as far away as the Tennessee River to where we got started in 2005. And um, Moultrie already had, um, Crawford County had a pretty significant relationship with the University of Georgia, training through the Institute of Government, developing leaders to the Fan Institute for Logistic Development plugging into small business resources, but they were really experiencing some pressure and challenges. Um, out of a good reason, new industries are under relocation here, and can significantly increase the population and apply pressure to things like infrastructure, zoning, school systems, housing, all the things you have to think about, you know, when you have a rapid expansion of community and plan for to be resilient in a community planning environment. So the idea was very much that if we could come on the ground at the university and provide a neutral place to convene people across the community to talk about the things that were on their mind and that they were open to working about in partnership with the University of Georgia, that that would be a good way for the community to get access to these resources, particularly in the communities, but also a good way for the students at the University of Georgia who are studying things like engineering and business and they So we'll be holding a broad business session talking about the implications of these public forums. We'll also be doing a lot of community surveys to understand and talk to our young people and also understand what the change in that community is like that needs to be brought to the community. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. On the ground in the community, uh, we, we see support. City and county officials and employees from the Chamber of Development Authority, as well as other higher ed institutions. We have great technical colleges in the state. We have great state colleges throughout the state, and also 
proud of us for doing that. So we really rallied all those folks together to come together and talk about those issues. And then on the campus, it's just a small thing that's constantly building relationships with faculty and researchers and offering people student cards to identify opportunities for them. is really that you know, it's so easy to look at primarily and a lot of the things that we've done have been really good to the course. And often they don't have big teams of people with specialized skills to kind of examine the feasibility of a project or scope the project out. So a lot of times our choice students and faculty can be helped gather information to help them make a good time if it's the right course of action for them. Um, a quick example of that is we had a few people that wanted to build a water park. And somebody had brought the idea of the water park to them, and they were trying to evaluate whether that was a good idea or not. And um, so um, we informed decision makers, and we used to go on training with them, but we were able to evaluate some different projects, and um, they were able to determine that the water park might be something that was going to really put on the asset and bring a real value to the community, would be creating a splash pad to bring people together and interact in a way that was cost effective for the community and safe. So they determined after we did the study to show them the different options, the best course of action for them. I think that's a great way to inform what the choice is. Yes, and sometimes they come and say, I need the right answer for a community. So what we try to do is inject them with the best, best practices and other people who kind of sit on the sides. We um, try to get accurate information to help them inform what they're doing and about the course of action. And then, you know, once they make it to the palette of the team, there may be other opportunities for engineering students or maybe social design students or business students to help them with all sorts of planning around the campus. So that's really fun. I started um, talking to the Pulaski County at the Brighton Center of the State in 2011. So I was actually the community based faculty planning team bringing people together, um, encouraging public input, developing a plan, and then identifying and connecting the resources that we needed to put together um, to the community to work on issues like health and wellness and downtown youth development and project management and building the We absolutely did. Um, one of the first initiatives that I was involved in was a very important initiative to the Pulaski Young Pregnancy Center. Um, while there were large numbers of teen pregnancy cases being looked at, there were some young folks somewhere in town who had that issue in hand, but we just decided that we wanted to make a bigger impact. So we did some outreach with that. So working with other schools to connect to programs, school system officers, pharmacies, hospitals, banks, um, we built a team maze which is a way to educate kids on the value of good decisions and staying in good health and being recognized in high school. And it's safe environment where there are lots of adults to show their peer around them and to share their knowledge um, around health care and well-being and self-esteem and financial planning with those kids in the class. So I'm really proud to say that we did it three different times and we had four teacher and college community leaders from the team come together all to show that they cared about their They conduct a lot of workshops, they help with training, um, they do workshops, they educate in the new science too, but they have a community grant initiative, um, which is a resource that is often out of the price range for a lot of smaller communities that they might set up. So 
through that kind of integration process to create the thing together and come up with an idea and help to help us work in some of the classic families. The music that people love at the courthouse is really featured and there's some really special cups of milk that we can have that are unique to that area. I think through that effort, it really coalesces into the redevelopment of that beautiful downtown area of South Carolina Street. Um, so again, we're taking the initiative of looking at getting a uh, master plan for downtown revitalization, um, which breaks out the steps that initial intermediate and long-term goals for the community to access these luxury public grants. It gives them a plan to work from. And I'm proud to say that Pulaski County has now almost completed that downtown revitalization strategy. I know there are malls downtown, there are restaurants, bakeries, shops, um, there are green spaces, and a new community park is going to be in that really heavy on August 10th. So implementing that downtown strategy along landscape design students and also engineering students to improve traffic patterns is really being key to help to get revitalization of downtown Hawkins Street. And now it's a place we don't just drive to, but we can kind of stop and spend some time. Yes. Um, so one of the biggest barriers to um, encouraging shopping on College Street is that it's on a state highway. And um, oftentimes the truck traffic um, will not slow down, may be uncomfortable or getting your car to work, um, those kinds of things. Um, so in addition to things like the greenery and plantings and things like that that create a pedestrian friendly atmosphere, um, they came to the University of Engineering students to help them look at how to get to requirements and identify a plan that the term now is called Road and Diet, where you're expanding the opportunities for both recreation, like cycling and walking, um, while you're kind of narrowing the roadway to encourage traffic to slow down. And uh, those steps have been in place and uh, already see a big difference, uh, but there's going to be further improvements to College Street, Department of Transportation, which are some of the awarded a planning grant to complete that planning process and then a five million dollar grant to complete that process. I think absolutely people appreciate excuse me. People appreciate the community. They want people to get out there. They want people to walk. They want kids to be able to play and um, making it a safe and comfortable environment. It's really the main thing. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, in addition to a small team of adults working in this program, the bulk of our workforce is really um, graduate students from places like the College of Public Health, the College of Engineering, um, business schools, all the different research and community we want to tap into. Um, so those students gain really world experience. And what I love is they can work on a project with a group of community, and they can take that to the employer and not say, like, I learned this in my class, but I've learned how to interact with the client. I've learned how to communicate well. I've learned how to listen well. And I've learned how to execute that plan after they have done the work that needs to be done. It is not uncommon to see that, particularly in areas like engineering, get a job offer from the city or county school of engineering for our Major Non Engineer after they're done. Um, so they're like one step away from the professional credentials, and the next thing for them is on to the job market. Of course, some of that usually is due to the city council and the uh, commission. And maybe it goes from there down to the community. Sure. Um, a lot of times, because we're limited in number, our community people are in our district here. So a lot of those contacts are with uh, chamber of commerce officials or the Department of Consumer Benefits and Consumer Associated with Commerce, or a local attorney to help for me here to carry out the work that's being done in our street communities. Um, so usually the focus is more for us to begin to have that conversation and to speak to people where they're just not the right fit for that community. Um, 
we did recruit the uh, career center at the conference called Camp Shade, where you can put stuff where they do offer citizenships. It's a great way for like, graduate students to just be paid for in exchange for some hours of work with our team. And then our team is an athlete who is not paying in the faculty themselves who can find them and help them relationships and finding opportunities for classes for their graduate students to design that and put them in the and come in and be the work of our team. Absolutely. Um, I think from the, the student point of view, we try to have some big picture moments with the career center every year. Um, we also have a lot of students who come from our faith community to know about the work that we do in our own community and what's going on in our own community. They reach out to us and see how they can contribute to the great work that's going on in this great community. Yes, so one of the things um, that we really want to tap into with regards to the Capital Community Youth Coaching Program is while the program funding can be a long term, decades long partnership in the eight, not nine communities, what are ways we can make that even more important for students and that provides some sort of connection to the planning process? Um, so, with that charge, we created what's called the Connected Community Communities Program. And that program is a shorter term partnership, usually about two years. Um, we have a specially designated um, archway professional on campus who helps work with communities like the staff that we have in the program to do site visit and um, help them identify ways that they can improve the learning that they're needed to design a particularly in the case of North Valley. Um, we're very intentional in the revitalizing of downtown to be working with the downtown development authority to explore the way citizen points in downtown North Valley revitalize the work that's going on in our region. Um, we're really excited to be there. Um, we have a lot of support from the city, but also from Fort Valley State University and another great grant institution in our state. Um, so we're really excited about the different opportunities to partner with Fort Valley State um, and work with all the communities in the Fort Valley Metro Regional Conference. Yeah, Kentucky County is Thompson. It's right on the South Carolina border. Um, it's a great community with great location. They have so much prosperity in our state right now. And Augusta is in the center of Fort Worth. And so that Augusta region is really planning for growth. And so a lot of our work with the Kentucky County is really making it their front desk. Hometown, small town, quality atmosphere that people have a chance to visit when they're in the Kentucky County. Um, so they're really working hard to make sure that kind of their downtown is speaking up, um, they've done a lot of education. They've also done a lot of infrastructure planning to address um, opportunities to develop new housing areas. We've done a lot of strategic planning for people who've been that way. I can wait to bash them into somewhere else. What you see are some beautiful exit um, areas that were designed by landscape architects and engineers and plans that are going in. And more recently, they received $2 million to um, build a park right next to the Southern Center um, with plans that UK Forest and Steel has created for them. So they really have a lot of great things going on, and we love to think that our communities are great places to live and work and play. And I think every day there's a lot of community pride um, in these areas, um, knowing that people are doing really good jobs as a citizen and helping attract the right types of people to the Forest Valley. Well, I think that theater is a very critical part of the campus of Bible Valley Academy. It's based on people and entertainment opportunities, but we really need to get on the ground and make it make it smart. You know, if you have a theater space that can put your imagination with a solid business plan, um, that's going to drive business to the restaurants. That's going to drive foot traffic to downtown. And that's going to be a feature that has real emphasis in the economic viability of the community. So while a lot of these theaters have been restored, some of the theaters that are continuing to operate um, would maybe not have attracted as many thousand people as they did in the 80s. So we've done a big place that we need a place for theaters. We've also helped them make sure that they can continue to have those 
Well, we certainly hope that that relationship um, will help us share with people in other communities. They have been partnered with some of our communities in the past on a smaller scale. Um, and I know we've heard from groups like the Opera House and Opera Schools who really know uh, and have done a lot of work to make sure that their accounts are viable. But sometimes we have communities start to have a nice brand like that to help us in our community space and class to be there. Two initiatives that I kind of like to highlight that showcase that are the Diversity Initiative and the Phoenix Hill Diversity File. They were the initiatives that every candidate for the FDOC brought and was traditionally led by the Community Coordinator and the Chief System and the Arts Administration there and really committed to revitalizing their own memory, for instance, and, and really trying to engage the thing that they could show parents how to read their children, how they might support them. Just to make the world they come to them as the best possible they can. And then for the adults in the community, they have an education program that we use to make our environment safe for our children. And we really put them through um, a college boot camp of life skills um, from parenting and financial literacy to mental health to physical health um, to job preparedness and revenue management and all those things. And so there's a large group of the community and a lot of
Recognize too that they were going to have some additional, additional power that they needed to this meeting. Um, because of that, this would be a place where people land and land. I'm going to the annual Sunday or one of the meetings associated with the fire study. Um, so I think we would be looking for that activity without knowing how many people were in the community so that people were accepted and maybe some of the safety. to ensure that we remain working and moving ahead on this project and we don't get left behind in the process. So we've got wonderful people who can work in there. We're now connected with some of the communities and uh, we're really excited to begin this process with them this week. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a really job, it is a little bit of a marketing challenge because if you don't typically, if you're in Georgia, you wouldn't be looking for a job at the University of Georgia in Athens. And so we really um, are looking for someone right now to give us money. Um, and we can do some papers. Um, we can use the Chamber of Commerce website to be reaching out to connect people with all the accounts and things that we have that we feel like we can share some money. Um, and the hopes of the fund, I think, is to bring people together, to encourage relationship building and collaboration. Um, and so we're looking for people to work in 